Hi. First of all, excuse me for my bad English. I will read a written note to explain the content in a better way, or this is what I hope. My name is Stefano Bonaiuti. Wait a moment. Ah. I'll let you see. <laughs> Fabio Cinelli. Hi. Hi. <laughs> okay. We are from Italy and we live in Florence. So let's talk about our project. We have made a prototype of a tactile display for blind people developed using Microsoft.NET Micro Framework on the device solution to our YouTube board and some custom hardware we added. The device on this table consists of a primary board able to run the Microsoft.NET Micro Framework, in our case it is the Tower 2 board, you know it, where the main program that I've developed runs. A touch screen, the same that comes with the development kit, a secondary board designed and programmed by Fabio, connected via SPI interface. The board is built on the Atmel microcontroller, exactly the AT Mega. 128. A mechanical instrumentation, also built by Fabio, that is connected to the secondary board and that have the purpose to give us the tactile feedback moving a matrix of 3x3 three three actuators. These are the motors, 9 motors, that will generate movements. There, these are the pipes that will mechanically transport the movements to the actuators and this is the actuator's grid head. Remember that this is only a prototype. Our aim was to use the shape memory alloy components to build the actuator's grid with a fraction of the size and the power consumption, but the lack of time and documentation have forced us to use a more conventional technology to implement the grid. With the shape memory alloy components, the motors and the pipes had no sense since all the needed instrumentation would be contained in the palm of one end. The operation on the device can be synthesized in this way. An image is displayed on the screen. We touch the screen, pointing a finger or a stylus in the area we want to analyze. The active area is converted in real time into a binary 3x3 matrix, which is applied on the actuators that so can return the tactile sensation. The actuator's uh, grid head should be fixed in a time ball on the same finger that used to touch the screen. So the finger mov movement is strictly coordinated with the tactile feedback in this way. The idea is that the scrolling finger or stylus on the surface of the touch screen will result in the tactile exploration of the image. Let's see the device working. Okay. I power on the board. First the secondary board. Okay. And after the main board. This is the program splash screen. Now, now go away. Now the first image is being loaded and processed. Just a note, the demo images in the prototype are loaded from the program resource bundle, but the aim is to give the possibility to use an SD card formatted with FAT32 file system to load them from. Okay, the image is loaded. You can see the first image that's very simple, just geometric shapes. The next are real color photos. A small square cursor that we can move with the stylus and the sidebar that give us some information. On the top there is a black and white representation of the image under the cursor. On the middle a graphical representation of the actuator's grid and on the bottom a grayscale in transformation of the same cursor area. Okay, let's move the cursor around. The sidebar changes accordingly and we can see the LEDs on the secondary board 
to have the same configuration of our simulation on the center of the sidebar. Okay. Okay. Now we can zoom on the actuator's head and see it's a small, try to force your imagination, that the pins moves in the same way to Okay, I change the configuration and so the pins moves. Okay. The refresh on the actuator's head is configured on a 3 Hz frequency that is sufficient to give us the sensation of the movement when the head is placed on the skin. So imagine the finger that scroll on the screen and the actuator's grid that give the tactile feedback of what we are touching. That's the goal of the device. Now let's see some extra functions on the main board. Pressing the left button, we can switch on or off the sidebar. Pressing the up and down button, we can change the sensibility of the algorithm that elaborates the cursor area to move the actuator's grid. Okay. Okay. Pressing the right button, we can change the image. There is to wait some seconds because the image had to be analyzed before we can use it. Let's move around. Okay, this is a border, you can see it. Okay, we can see the pins that moves. Okay. Well, what else can we tell you about our device? The idea of the device comes mainly from the need to provide a portable image viewer for blind people and can be used for educational purposes as a device connected to a PC for quick viewing contents or as the core of a PDA system, possibly assembled together with a braille bar. But the possible implementations do not end here. The device can be useful in any situation where you need to add an extra dimension to a viewing of a two-dimensional content or where you must explore it only with your tactile self. Examples can be found in biomedical field, video assisted surgery or long distance diagnosis. Now the technical part. All this work was made in a very small amount of time and this thanks to the .NET micro framework that gives us the possibility to develop a such low level device with the same tools, library and frameworks that we use for everyday programming. This framework is a really a big resource to everyone, for everyone that have to build the better devices. Thank you for your patience and excuse me again for my bad English. Bye!